Hi everyone. Welcome to the pre-watch video on something which is very interesting, but sometimes non-commercy find it a bit confusing. I'm talking about none other than the phenomena of accrual, which we are going to use for the measurement of performance. Well, uh, I want to keep the confusion aside and give you a very, very simple example um, of what uh, you are doing right now. Well, uh, right now you are in the stage of learning, you are attending some classes uh, and so to speak you have also paid some fees. Now the payment of the fees, the point in time at which you paid the fees, vis-a-vis -vis the point in time you are getting the benefit of it, you see the two are not exactly the same. They may be same in a, let's say, from an yearly point of view that both happen on the same year. But at a, as a point in time they are two different you know, uh, following the two different time zones. The point where you get the benefit, the point where the actual transaction for which the payment has happened, the point where the happening of that happening has happened, that is the point of approval. Okay? The cash flows are important, very critical for every transaction. They are also recorded. All I'm here to say is that they are a different entity as far as incomes and expenses are concerned. We are going to follow accrual for income and expenses and as I said that accrual is largely used for measurement of performance not as much for position um, although there is a you know uh, the two coincide at a point in time but as a manager as a b-school student you don't have to worry about all of that. So just take it very simply uh, in economics also you would have or you would uh, very soon study about the real flows and the monetary flows. So real flows is basically the movement of goods and services, the, the deliveries, you know, the receipt of services, the rendering of services, all that is accrual. The monetary flows, the cash flows, you know, from RBI to bank, bank to consumers, etc., etc., that's the cash flow part. So again, um, you know, just, just be mindful of the fact that uh, I'm not saying that accrual is more important or cash flow is more important. Both are equally important, but they measure different aspects about the health of the business. So while I have to uh, find out how well the business is doing. I have to find out how well the business is consuming. I don't have to look at the cash flows. I have to look at the accrual flows, the point in time the accrual has happened. Okay. So in my live class, I'm going to take two very simple examples. And through those, we will uh, be, uh, understand the relationship between the cash flows and the accrual flows. And in the process, I am sure you're going to become much, much better reader of the financial statement. And you would be able to also answer some of the confusions that came up while we were doing the Baron Kober case, where uh, the performance statement said that the surplus was 214, but that wasn't the amount of bushels of wheat that were rendered back to the Baron. So uh, at that time also, I uh, asked you to put a hashtag uh, in the live class where just write accrual versus cash and we're going to do it next time. So my next class with you is going to be about all of that. Okay, uh, just a couple of points more uh, on this accrual versus cash. Um, quickly, uh, they are different triggers for any transaction. And by transaction, I typically mean an income and an expense statement. So uh, the examples that I'm going to take with you are these two. So, you know, the rent uh, has been paid much more than it should have. Uh, the salary has been paid lesser than what it should have. We will talk about you know the so, so so for a recipient it's an income for the you know payer it's an expense so we'll capture both these aspects here um reiterating the fact that both are absolutely critical to record we are not making one more important than the other but yeah depending on the purpose if my purpose is to measure the performance i'm not going to look at the cash flows an example goods uh, person a delivered goods to person B, the payment hasn't happened. Can person A record that as his sales? Answer is yes, but the cash flow hasn't happened. It doesn't matter. That's what, you know, it means. The accrual. Second example, person B made payment to person A for a sale that had happened last year. Should person A record the receipt of cash as his sale in the current year? No in spite of the fact that cash with the Makkah Medina of all businesses right now, more particularly in a, you know, tight situation, we disregard cash for the purpose of performance. 
but hey don't don't forget that cash whenever received will be entered in the cash flow statement so here is a very very clear distinction your income statement or p and l account is going to worry about accrual any transaction is going to enter in income statement only if the accrual is complete but there is another medical report i call them different rooms so uh, there is a room called as cash flow statement there is a security guard outside the the transaction wants to enter the room uh, the only question the security guard is asking has the cash flow happened doesn't matter the basic transaction was done last year and therefore the cash is the payment late or doesn't matter the transaction has to happen tomorrow the cash is an advance payment cash flow doesn't ask these questions cash flow just ask single question has the cash flow happened and then cash flow is divided into operating investing and financing that you anyways know there is a security guard outside this room as well and a transaction wanted to enter income statement the security guard asked one single question a bit different question has the main job happened that means if it's an income have you actually done what you were supposed to if yes you can book that as income if an expense have you taken the benefit of that completely if yes you can enter uh, as expense if you have taken the benefit of pro rata then only the pro rata portion can enter income statement as expense the pending oh that should go to the balance sheet because that still is a future benefit you see you making payment of 2 years under uh, let's say uh, for a, for a car uh, insurance premium uh, and uh, it's a, uh, 2 years so year 1 and year 2 total payment let's say 10000 each so you made 10 plus 10 20000 only first 10000 will be allowed to be taken as an expense for the first year because the balance 10000 is still futuristic it's only the first year ka 10000 is what will qualify my security guard dancer have you taken the benefit of that as an expense that's what an accrual is so uh, you know i'm i'm very very excited uh, to look at this fundamental concept after which it will be much clearer to you as to why the output of an income statement doesn't really tally with the output of a cash flow statement okay i'm really really super excited um i am going to look at all of uh you know the queries the questions etc uh, in my live class um thanks very much looking forward to speak to you